It's Monday, January 28th, Tuesday, January 29th. If you're on the East Coast or across the pond, and this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. Hope you had a great day and night coming off the weekend. I am your host, Dave Scott, broadcasting to you live from the Great White North on top of the mountains of snowy central British Columbia, right here at SOR headquarters. We welcome you nightly on the SOR radio network, Deep Talk Radio and Revolution Radio. If you want to listen to our archives, we have them free for you at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio just do me a favor hit that subscribe button our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you you can rock out to bumblefoot right now go shopping at our spaced out radio store read up on captain shirk's sor newswire and so much more Tonight's show is brought to you by the YouTube channel NSUHO. Sebastian Martin brings high-quality messages to the masses. Head to our website, click on the NSUHO banner, and subscribe to the channel today. It's the final Monday of the month, which means we see the return of Butch Witkowski's Strange Days. Butch is the founder and lead investigator of Pennsylvania's UFO Cop, which deals with reports of Bigfoot, Dogman, ghosts, UFOs, aliens, and some sort of strange bipedal canine roaming the national forests. So tonight, we are going to look into something interesting. The rising statistics of sightings and accounts coming into Butch's team. Are people seeing more? Or are they just finding it easy to report because of the internet? We'll find out soon. Then at the bottom of hour number three, Olaf Phillips is back from Paranoia Magazine for the SOR Newswire. Mr. Butch Witkowski, first time of 2019 we have you on the air with us. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, sir, and how are you? I am fantastic, fantastic. I had a good hair day the last couple of days. The beard is coming in just fine, so life is good, my friend. Life is good. I expect to see you on a Revlon commercial any day now. Wow, you went there, eh? I think yeah, you're I just. Je- I just think you're jealous because your friends all try to rub blue chalk on you to use you as a cue ball stick or a pool stick. That's that's true, but we said we never wouldn't discuss that on the air. I know, I know, but you gave me the shot. I had to fire it right back, my friend. You know, we talked last time you were on the air right after Christmas about, you know, the year 2018, how it was just a a weird, strange year, the year of the UFO, the year of everything that is, you know, that has everybody looking up to the stars, wondering what is up there. Butch, we're going to get into that heavily tonight because you have some interesting statistics that shows that everything is going on up in sightings, in reports. But for people who have never heard you before, Butch, let's break it down. You are a former police officer. You are someone who got into this field a couple of decades ago and you started taking it seriously. Why in your mind did you feel that after you retired from everything, you retired from your careers, that you wanted to get into this? I think it's just, it boils down to, I just want the truth. I want to know that what I've been looking for and what I've been studying and researching all these years is either fact or a fiction. But the way it's going, I'm beginning to believe it's way more fact than fiction. Um, 2018, all the numbers and everything climbed, ufology, cryptozoology, paranormal, bipedal, everything climbed, everything. We're into 2019 now, what, 29 days, 28 days, 29 days. And in the past week, I've gotten 14 reports, 14, Really? 14. That's so unusual because. If I would have average out a month, I would say one or two, possibly three a week, 14. And today is what? Monday. Yeah. You know, and I got three today. So uh, I guess the ones that are mostly on the uptake right at this point are the Bigfoot sightings. We are getting deluged with them. And, um, There's like four or five in one area. Uh, we've we've noticed uh, that 
a lot of a lot of the older reports we had, they were always seen in like game land, state parks, you know, meandering around the mountains and stuff like that. But it's we've gotten a series of reports uh, from five of my investigators here in the state, in our state alone, where they are being seen multiple witness sightings around dams, uh, big lakes, uh, large ponds, rivers. And when I thought back about that, uh, I could only come up with two that were around waterways uh, in Pennsylvania. And um, caves, that's another one, uh, which we never had any in caves or around caves. But Pennsylvania is littered with them. We got caves everywhere. Um, old mines, mine shafts are open. I mean, that's 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 as common as an ice cream cone. Um, it, it, it's very strange for those type of sightings where we're getting them. We haven't received one. No, I lie. We received one where it was outside of a game land on a mountain. Uh, the mountain is no part of the game land. It's private property, but close enough. That's the only one out of all these reports. The descriptions uh, are given by um, normally one or two people. No, we're getting reports from five or six people seeing it at the same time. Uh, one, uh, one I'll just throw up real quick. We're still under investigation. We're waiting on pictures and, and some prints that were taken. But uh, gentlemen's fishing on one side of, of, uh, of the dam uh, on the other side of the dam, you got a guy taking pictures of the dam, and down from that guy, there's just a couple just taking a walk. Uh, the creature comes out near where the guy's fishing behind him. He doesn't see it right away. Uh, the professional photographer, he sees it. He starts snapping away, so we're waiting on those pictures. But, you know, uh, they had to keep yelling at the fisherman for him to turn around. All he saw when he turned around was it. It was kind of sideways and, you know, just strolled right back into the woods. But when they got there, uh, that shoreline is, it's, it's a sandy gravel uh, mixed with some dirt. I, you know, it's, it, the backfill is probably what it is from the dam, but uh, they got great prints. And the reports are coming from all over the state. It's not just a certain area. Um, we have them in uh, northern part of the state, uh, central, central part of the state, southern part of the state, southwestern part of the state. It's very unusual uh, to get that many reports uh, of, you know, a single individual. Now, one, and this will probably be the first one we've ever, that I'm familiar with that we've ever had, not that I can remember ever having one. Uh, we have a farmer. Uh, now, his location would be the northeastern part of the state, closer to central, but still northeastern, a uh, very large farm. He, uh, his son, and a neighbor working on a, a very large farm that he owns. He's the owner. And uh, this thing is just trompsing around out in the field. Like, you know, it's Sunday afternoon. It's taking a walk. It's just walking all over the field. Uh, his first inclination was to get back to the truck and grab a rifle. And then he just thought it was kind of comical because it was just walking around in the field. Wasn't doing anything. Didn't come in or out of the woods, just kind of walking around this field. And then never looked at them. They started hooting and hollering at it. And it just stood there for a minute and turned around and just kind of walked into the next field and out of sight. That's weirdly weird. So they got uh, where he uh, got into the field, there's some... Um, uh, fencing, old fencing that was left up. It's not functional anymore. It's just there on a pile to be gotten rid of eventually, I guess. And it walked past that and deposited quite a bit of hair on it. So he got hair samples. He got footprints. He got photographs. Uh, you know, uh, he, uh, the kid recorded it. Uh, his son recorded it with his cell phone, uh, the noises it was making. But these are very strange because normally – Bigfoot reports are somebody sees something, they don't know what it is, they give you a half, kind of half-baked description, and then it's gone. And that's the end of the story. 
but now the one at the dam, the one at the farm, uh, there's one in Fayette County that we're following up on. We just got that one. Um, uh, a lady from out of, out of the county, actually out of the state, uh, was going to visit some folks in, 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 in our state. And as she was driving up the road, one walked out in front of her. She almost hit it. And, um, you know, a 61 year old woman and some other people in the car. And, you know, they, after she slammed on the brakes, they're all watching this thing, just take three big strides and across two lane highway. And, um, UFO reports are up, uh, mainly orbs. Uh, I guess we got four of those in about seven days, uh, mostly on the Eastern side of the state. I have one out in western, northwestern, way northwestern part of the state up in Erie. Um, we have two new bipedal canine reports that just came in. Uh, we don't even have a whole lot of information on that. Uh, one of my investigators making those contacts today and tomorrow. Um, paranormal activity is being reported. I mean, it's just freaky. It's very strange. Like I said, last year it was coming up and it was, we were busy, but now this is getting kind of ridiculous. I mean, and the reports are all solid. You know what I mean? It's not um, the guys down at the local bar having some fun putting a report in. And, and I don't know why that is, but I checked with a couple other states, other, other uh, folks. They're having the same problem. Um, one guy said he thinks it's the apocalypse. He said, this is it, man. We're all going down. I said, okay. But it's, it's really weird that we have that many reports at the same time. I, and seriously, Nobody gets that many reports at the same time. I think I I I think um, I just saw it. Mufon for the the whole month of December only had I think fourteen reports. We've had that many in less than two weeks. So I don't Do know what's think, going on. Yeah. I don't know what it's. I don't. I don't know what it's like up in Canada. I know that Brazil is having a bunch of bipedal reports, um, but uh, Brazil has always been. Um, uh, werewolf type things, you know, they even have a werewolf society. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of members and they go way back with werewolves, but you know, the crypt is here. The bipedal is not a werewolf. I mean, it's not running around with blue jeans on and sneakers. Um, uh, the other, uh, Florida's having a, a kind of a melee with UFOs. Um, uh, there's, there's a handful of, Northern California Bigfoot reports come, that just came out. I mean, there's so much stuff coming out, Dave. It's hard to keep up with it. And seriously, I mean, you know, I'm retired, so I do this all the time, full time. And I'm having a real problem keeping up with this stuff. Butch, do you think that there is anything to do with these newfound reports because people are paying attention to the skies and to the surroundings around them, all due to the new media attention that has been given on a serious note towards UFOs? I, I think it's possible, yes. Um, uh, I know a lot of the smaller groups that were out there dispersed. They're, they're, they're just not there anymore. Um, the, um, there's a lot of independent researchers out there now. Uh, I mean, serious researchers. I don't mean the kind that are just looking to get a, make a, you know, publish a book or get on TV. Um, and they're they're getting these reports. Uh, the, the the larger groups aren't getting any reports anymore. Um, like I said, MUFON listed I think fourteen or seventeen reports for the month of December, but that's MUFON's reports. That's nobody else's. I mean, those are their reports, uh, and that's the that's that thing they publish every month. Uh, for the general public. But, um, I mean, the leader in reports in the United States has always been California and Texas, only because of their size, and third in line would be Florida. Um, I just wish we had better reporting up in Canada, you know, especially along the border of the United States, eastern and, and central, and central uh, part of the country and out where you guys are. But... Um, there's not a whole lot of reporting coming out of Canada. And I'm sure, you know, that those reports, if we're getting them here, they're getting them in Canada, just like they're getting them in Mexico. I mean, when we jump in reports, when the United States jumps in reports, the border states jump in reports too. 
but we just can't get that information. I mean, if, you know, it would help you if you could track, you know, like if you had reports in Pennsylvania that matched reports in New York, but then they matched reports, say, in Montreal, you know, or Quebec, or, or you're tracking uh, reports of something in, um, you know, state of Washington, out that area, that went up into British, you know, we were getting reports like that out of British Columbia. But unfortunately, there just aren't anybody involved in that, that those reports are coming out of there. Um, I don't even know if uh, Rutkowski is doing it anymore. I haven't seen any of his stuff for a long, long time. Yes, he's still but, working on it. He, he keeps quite private, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's... Uh, at one time, you know, you could you could go online. He had, like, a... It wasn't a blog. It was just, like, an information page that he had up, um, a personal page, and he was listing stuff. But he was chiming in every now and then um, with reports out of Canada. Um Puerto Rico right now, even with all the devastation they had down there, you know, the, the, all the damage done by the hurricanes and stuff, even they're getting a ton of reports. I don't know why, Dave. I have no idea. I mean, nothing has happened, and we looked at it, nothing has happened out of the ordinary from 17 to 18, but it's carrying on now into 19. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's even worse. Um, I was talking to um, a gentleman who runs a paranormal group. They've been running this group since 1973. And he said, you know, a report every month or two was like a lot for him. He said he's getting them on a weekly basis. And he said he can't cover it. So I think that's a danger, too, when you have too many reports. I think people will take shortcuts. They won't follow up on their proper procedures, investigative status, and such. And that could be even worse than not taking the report at all. I mean, if it's just a blown-off deal. Um, fortunately, you know, I have help um, that's close by, so uh, I can divvy it up. And um, we just had printed a map of our loop, our, our lichen loop, where we have our research area for our bipedal canines and it was funny it's a three by three map um, laminated that we can take out in the field but it's it's a very detailed map extremely detailed has trails on it roads you know everything it's very detailed and um at the bottom it had listed you know longitude latitude and all that crap and then underneath it it said total acreage 11 million acres So next time somebody tells me to go throw some fruit or meat out into the woods, now I can ask them which part of that 11 million acres they want me to do that in. <laughs> I didn't realize still, it was that. Big. I'm still telling you, my friend, you got to bring tennis balls and, and chew toys with yeah. you, man. You have to. Oh, yeah. We need to do yeah. this. Oh, test. I, I agree. I, I agree. Uh, sh anything shiny, bobbly, um, uh, I, I, I just – there was a gentleman I met at a conference, and this guy really floored me. He was buying slinkies, right? You know what a slinky is. Yes. And, and he was painting them fluorescent orange, fluorescent green, fluorescent yellow, these bright fluorescent colors, and hanging them off of trees on this, in his research area. Yeah. And he would hang them. He would actually, uh, he had one of these uh, portable ladders. I think they go up 16 feet. You know, when you fold them all up, they're like four foot, something like that. And um, he was hanging these things in trees, and it's kind of like a running gag where he'll put out three or four, and he'll go back in a couple weeks, three, four weeks maybe, he'll like go by, and there'll be one hanging. Or all four that he hung are now on different trees. Now, you know there's nobody up there carrying a ladder around doing that. You know that. So what's moving those slinkies? And he's been doing it now for 10 years. You know, you're breaking my heart when you're, you're saying that, because at our Sasquatch gifting site that we have up here, I have two slinkies. I have a, a oh, bright really? yellow one and a bright pink one, and they have not <laughs> moved. They have not oh. moved whatsoever. 
Now, we did get, now, I should say this, inside the pink slinky, because it is resting on a branch, you know, I slid it down the branch, there was some bark left inside of it one time. But that could have been anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. could have been anything. It, there's a lot of squirrels and chipmunks in that area. It could have been something like that. I mean, it's at about four and a half, five feet high, but mm-hmm. I didn't buy that. So we actually put a nickel in there, and the last few times that we went there, the nickel hadn't moved. So I don't know, but I'm also thinking that we're in a dead zone there as well. Yeah, I'd really like to get a hold of this guy again and see how well he's doing with that, see if he's still doing it. I'm pretty sure he is because he's been doing it for a lot of years. And um, I'll tell you another thing that's changed, and I, maybe, you'll, maybe you'll see it or maybe you'll talk to other people on the show eventually, or maybe some of the, uh, the sore listeners can do it. Um, researchers now are staking out a research area. Um, years ago, if they if – you got a report, say, at the bottom of a mountain. You search the whole mountain, top to bottom, side to side. You spend days, weeks, months all over the place. Uh, it, now they have uh, four or five researchers that I'm, I know of here in Pennsylvania um, are now, they have their own research areas that they, you know, they, that's it, that they don't go anyplace else. They stay in those research areas, which is a good thing because if they do have, more than one report, if they have multiple reports in a research area, it allows them to do many different things that they wouldn't do normally, you know, if they were trumpsing all over a, a mountainside or something like that. With a research area, you can you can embed, you know, camera traps. You can embed uh, different things, uh, different types of traps, um, different types of uh, recording devices, uh, video cameras, whatever. But you know where there are, and you know where they are, and you're familiar. You get to be so familiar with the area, you know that you know exactly what section you're working in. And um, I'm seeing a lot of that lately, which is a good thing. I mean, well, we we have research areas like our like and loop. Now, I don't think I'm not saying to everybody to go out and start researching 11 million acres, but because we don't research 11 million acres, we just go to to the closest uh, right. part of the sighting. Butch, I'm going to get you to hold on right there. We're going to go to break here at the bottom of the hour. Butch Witkowski's Strange Days happens the final Monday of every month. UFOrcop.com is Butch's website. We'll be back with more Butch Witkowski right after this. You're listening to Space Out Radio Live with Dave Scott on the Deep Talk Radio Network. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box, the iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box, the spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. 
You know, it's hard being the bad man of ufology, but that's just the way that I like it. This is Chris George Zuger, and I'll be hanging out with Dave Scott and SOR scientist Chris Cogswell for Reality Paranormal, the second Wednesday of every month. And our job is to break it down and come to conclusions as to what is really going on in the supernatural world. I'd love for you to join us right here on Spaced Out Radio. Hi there, this is Geraldina Roscoe from San Francisco's Bay Area Meditation. I invite you to join me the first Tuesday of every month with Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's The Spiritual You. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's time for you to take some time for you. We'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality. So come join us for The Spiritual You. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there. This is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me, Chris Zuger, and Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything is an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. Are you tired of being blocked, shadow banned, or placed in jail for simply posting your thoughts on social media? Social Media Freedom can take care of that for you. Social Media Freedom is the newest and one of the best free new apps that allows you the freedom to post what you want, when you want. It takes seconds to download from your app store. Come join the tribe at Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best $5 a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. 
Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Butch Witkowski, Strange Days happens the final Monday of every month right here on the Mighty SOR. Butch is from UFO Cop out of Pennsylvania. That's U-F-O-R-C-O-P dot com. U-F-O-R-C-O-P dot com. If you want to check out his website or file a report, Butch, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Butch, there was an interesting story that came out on Friday night from North Carolina about a three-year-old boy who disappeared for three days and two nights, and on the third day he was found in a briar patch crying loudly for his mother, as any child would. You know, it's a parent's worst nightmare when you call your children inside and one doesn't come in, and when you go searching for the child the child is not there. Now, North Carolina has had some of their worst winter weather since 2012. It's been very cold, very chilly. You would expect a young lad or a young child to be worn out from the elements. It was in an area where the... Ch- exactly. With the weather, exactly. With the, weather down, the weather they had down there, that, the weather they had down there that particular week, that kid would have been a popsicle. That's what I think, too. But the intriguing part about it, and the mainstream media has seemed to really pass over this, Uh is the fact that the child, when interviewed, the sheriff of the county stated that when they interviewed the child to see where he had been, he said that a bear had, he was with a bear. Now, being up here in Canada, I know at this time of year, bears are hibernating. And if they get woken up, it's because of hunger or something has startled them and they're, they are very angry getting up in the middle of their winter sleep. I don't know if they are hibernating down in North Carolina. What did you look into this story and what, do you, what are your thoughts? It wasn't a bear, I'll tell you that. A three-year-old kid, the size of the kid, because I saw the picture of him stand there. Or he was with his mother, <clears throat> excuse me, with his mother. And uh, he's just a little tight, three years old. He's a tight uh, to a bear. And I don't care what part of the country it was in. He would have been a sandwich. That would have been the end of him. Mm-hmm. There is no, no reports that we can find or anybody else that I know of that was looking into it could find where, um, you know, a bear raised a baby or like uh, these reports come out of Europe from the past, way past in the 18th and 19th centuries where uh, children were raised by wolves, you know, and uh, or monkeys in Africa. That, no, nah, that's, that's all nonsense. But a three-year-old, a black bear, lunch. That's what he would have been. I don't believe one word of it being a bear. Uh, I think one of the forest boys took care of him. Um you know, we've never come up with any absolute guaranteed report where a Bigfoot has killed anybody. Now, Yeti, different story. But Bigfoot in this country, no, never. Uh, even the old stories of the trappers and, you know, now dogs have been killed, yeah. But never a human. So, but the weather... At that point, that kid would have been a popsicle. He'd have been frozen stiff. There is no way that kid would have survived. No way would he have survived without some type of help. And what would a three-year-old know about a bear? Well, and that's what I'm thinking. And, and to put it logically, 
All right. Because I do believe the child saw a Sasquatch. That's just my gut feeling. But the reality states, what if somebody took him, gave him a teddy bear, okay, to calm himself down, all right, and then the person seeing the immediate reaction from law enforcement, search and rescue, the military, everybody who converged on that area pretty much said, "Uh uh-oh, this was a bad idea, and dropped the child off. I mean, that is entirely possible, too. Entirely possible, but you got to take the weather into consideration. Even if they would have left that kid out there, uh, I think when they talked to one of the, I think it was a state trooper, the state trooper who really didn't, wasn't buying the story about the bear either. Uh, and the question was asked, did you think he might've been kidnapped and just dropped off and, you know, well, first of all, <laughs> the weather, that kid wouldn't have survived 45 minutes out there. He was gone for three days. He had no uh, no uh, damage done by cold, uh, even when they found him. I mean, they took him to the hospital. They checked him out and released him to his parents. He wasn't like, uh, you know, he was probably kept, I think they said he was kept overnight. But he was in remarkable shape. Now, something took care of that boy out there. Something. Um, bear. No, no, Bear would have had lunch. Uh, the, uh, my opinion and opinion of a lot of guys that we talked about this when it first came out, everybody said the same thing. Um, one of the forest dwellers came upon that child and protected him, whether it was just got him out of the weather, maybe, you know, into some kind of shelter or just sat there with him and kept him warm, something. I mean, the kid was not dehydrated. He was not hungry. So uh, I just, and, and where he was found. And why would, why would a kidnapper put a kid in a patch of bra- bramble bushes? Uh, I agree. I agree. I mean, there's just... You, you throw I, him in I just the- you throw him out of the vehicle and into the ditch, and, and I hate to sound ca- cruel and callous about it. Yeah, well, that's sure what they do. And then because oh. you want to get out of there as soon as possible. Yeah. Who would walk a kid into the woods and put him in a bramble bush? Now, certain animals, deer, here in Pennsylvania, if you're chasing down a deer and... I'm not saying you wound him, but say you take a shot at him and you miss. If there's bramble patch around, he's heading for it, and he's going to get under it. And I know that for a fact because I chased one one time for about an hour and a half and wound up under a bramble bush, and I couldn't get to him. Now, I didn't. I missed him, but I wanted to make sure right, I found no blood or anything like that. But I could look in and see him, and he just sat there. You know, he's just down on all fours just looking at me. But the, I couldn't get in there. There's no way I can get in that briar patch. So, I mean, a kidnap, that's, that didn't, that's totally out of the question. This kid, whatever protected him, protected him, took care of him for those three days in that bitter cold weather, which would have probably claimed you or me in a matter of hours. And and I I'm leaning that way as well. And and you know maybe people will say, well, Dave, you're maybe you're wearing a, your tin foil a little too tight or whatever like that. But in that area of North Carolina, is there butch a lot of Sasquatch sightings? Yes, yes, there are. Now I'm, I don't know what you call a lot. Uh, we looked up. I think we found five or six. Now that was in a two year period. And two, two were in within. I think, I think my buddy said it was within um, eight miles of the location where they found the boy. But if you go on, when they gave the description, now that story has vanished pretty much. But when we looked it up on Google and did a Google Earth and looked at the area, I mean, this was thick, heavy wooded area. And they were all over that area, and they didn't see this kid. And then, just like that, they walk up on him the the third day. So with that history, 
do we know? Because, I mean, when you think North Carolina, you don't think Sasquatch. You think, you know, if I if I think about North Carolina, I think about the amount of, of megalodon shark teeth that are found all through the state. Like, you can go mm-hmm. 10, 20 miles into the state, go into a creek and dig up, you know, four or five inch long megalodon teeth. That's mm-hmm. what I think of. I don't think of Bigfoot. I think of sharks in the ocean. I think of of all sorts of things outside of that cryptid. But in that area, if there have been a few sightings within eight miles of that, that does go to show that there is potentially something there. And what would that, what would have brought that Bigfoot into the area? Because what I'm curious about I would like to hear one of these witnesses, whether it's search and rescue, whether it's the police, whether it's the grandmother herself who is watching the children, were there any footprints? You know, Dave, if there were, they'll never, they'll never admit to that. I mean, just, just the, just the way the story disappeared. I mean, a child in the cold by himself, three years old. I mean, three years old. Out in the woods, three, heavy woods, three. you got you've got wild boar all over the place. I mean, if you want to hunt boar, North and South Carolina, man, they got them, and they're big boys. They're a couple hundred pounders, and they're dropping them with very high powered rifles. Well, as my buddy Mikey was saying, the bramble bushes and the briar patches—that's the place to hide the child from any type of of coyotes or or boars or anything that could be malicious to it because a a, a wounded a screaming child in the middle of a forest is a meal the animal thinks okay that could be a rabbit a small deer or anything that is in trouble that's a meal and at this time of year where meals are scarce you take the easiest route that's nature's way yep absolutely that's why Everybody that I talked to, when we first started talking about it, said exactly the same thing right off the bat. It was no bear. No way, absolutely no way that this kid was watched over by a bear or protected by a bear. And the kid had no uh, marks from the cold. I mean, you know, it was just like he left the house and was out there and got picked up. No damage. If, yeah. I mean, you know, no frost, no frostbite. That was what amazed everybody. This kid didn't have any frostbite on it. Our temperature here right now is, I think, 17, 16. I will guarantee you, and I'm just wearing jeans and a T-shirt, socks and slippers. I'll bet you if I'd go out there within 15, 20 minutes, I'd have some type of frostbite. You're just not Canadian enough. Oh God, no! Oh my God, no! Um, we're 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 uh, still barbecuing at that temperature. I I understand that. <laughs> I I always said if everything ever goes sour, I'm heading to Canada because they're the only people. Them and cockroaches are going to be the only ones that are alive. <laughs> oh, what the hell? You think we're worried about an ice age up here in Canada? Yeah, right. Hell no! <laughs> That's just winter. A long winter, but we're okay with that. Anyways, but but in regards to this story, I mean, it is amazing, and God bless, the child is okay oh, yeah. and had very minimal scratches. And it's funny because the majority of those scratches came on the child when they were trying to get him out of that briar patch. Yeah, he didn't have any marks on him until they got him out. Yeah, exactly. When they when they the one the one the one re- uh, one researcher the one search guy. Uh, who was on the TV uh, right after they got him out, uh, they asked the condition of the boy, and, he, you know, the guy said, uh, it looks like he just left the house. <laughs> and they asked if he had any, you know, any wounds or anything like that, and they said, well, take him to the hospital, but he looks fine to me. So, look, if that's that's what gets me cranked up when you get this these guys out there that are hunting Bigfoot. They're out there to kill him. Um, now granted, I will be the first one to admit that you probably need a body of one to find out exactly what you're dealing with, but 
since they are the hide and seek champions of the world, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon either. Um, it is uh, crazy uh, to think that a child that young could come up with a story of a bear. That just blows my mind. I would love to I see mean, a FOIA request for this. I really would. Yeah, good once luck the with investiga- that. Once the investigation is done, I think Butch Witkowski should file a FOIA request to try and f- find out what it was the child said. Mm, yeah, I could do that. I, I just... I just... One of the things, I guess, that is odd to me is that the boy doesn't mention anything about a bear until he's at the hospital. You know, they get him out of there, they bundle him up, they get him in an ambulance, they take him away. And in the hospital, when he's asked, you know, how did you keep warm or, you know, now this kid hasn't had anything to eat or drink. His clothing was definitely not winter clothing. I mean, he walked out of the house. He wasn't dressed for that weather. I just, I'm not, I'm not buying that story. I just think, you know, somewhere by the grace of God, one of our furry brethren got in there and took care of that kid till he found him, and it wasn't a bear. No, I and I'm leaning towards that too, and maybe it's because I want to believe. All right, but just there's too many questions rather than answers in regards to this. I mean, the fact that, like you said, the child didn't look dehydrated at all. And yes, the human body can go, you know, 14, 15 days without water or food. The the simple fact is he would have looked, started to look a little emaciated because of the weather, because of everything. And how is a three-year-old going to understand about finding shelter? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. A three-year-old. Do you, I look at. I, I mean, my son the, is five how, years old, and he does. He doesn't understand it. How How did this three-year-old get into that bramble patch? Well, and that's and that's the other thing is we got about four minutes here before we got to go to break. You know, here's my theory on it, and I don't know if I am right, but I'm curious your opinion. I think this Sasquatch knew, and I'm going to, if I believe this theory, which I'm throwing out there, if this was a Sasquatch event, this Sasquatch was obviously watching the rescue crews and knew exactly where to put that child, that the child would be found. Exactly where to put that child. And put him in a safe spot in the bramble bushes. Sure, right. That's very possible. Absolutely possible. I mean, how many people have even ever seen a young Sasquatch? Very few. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things here on the on the uh, on the chat where um, somebody, uh, I think it's Bigfoot Schmidt, yeah, Bigfoot Schmidt, uh, said he wondered if the child gets older, if he'd be better able to explain what happened. We can only hope. Well, I mean, on the flip side, I think the media, too, has a responsibility on this to try and figure this out. I mean, yeah. the child, the ch- uh, granted, they're not going to. The story is the child got back home safe and sound. That's the, the mainstream media side of the story. But any good reporter would would question that. What the hell are we talking about a bear? Why wouldn't the bear eat them? And maybe there has been reports, because I haven't looked into it, maybe in the smaller newspapers or, or whatever, but I would be very curious to calling up, and maybe I'll get Captain Shirk to do that, our newsie, uh, to to check out those reports to see if any of the local papers or, or radio stations were covering the question about the bear. Because that's what's going viral. The fact that the child, yeah. the, the, that the child is safe, is now irrelevant. Everybody wants to know, what about this damn bear? And if it was yeah. a bear, why didn't the bear eat him? Yeah, exactly. Especially, just like you said, food right now is scarce. 
and you just had a woman and a child killed by a bear. I forget what state it was in now. Colorado, maybe? Uh, I think. Uh, they were on a hike. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, um, a mother and uh, uh, her son. And the bear attacked and mauled and killed both of them. Yeah. And pretty much, devou- pretty much devoured them. It's a bad time of year to I, be in bear territory, especially if oh, you're not. No, no. Oh, no, no, no. Mm-mm. I don't want to be in bear territory, armed or unarmed. They, uh, they are not a trustworthy animal. Just like I watch these photographers sneak up on them, you know. I'm going like, <laughs> one of these days you're going to sneak up on them. It's going to be the last thing you sneak up on. They're fast. They're fast. They're so fast, it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I forget. Absolutely. What, they can cover 100 yards in a matter of a couple seconds. It's ridiculous. And people, well, they're too big to run. Now, the only way you'll outrun a bear, and you can't outrun a bear if you run downhill. A bear can't run downhill. He'll fall. He'll tumble. It's an interesting story, nonetheless, and I and I really do believe, Butch, and I'm sure you're in agreement with this, that the community, whether it's the mainstream or the alternative, we really need to follow up on this one because I think there's a lot more to this than we are going to find out, and I really do hope that somebody follows up on this story because it would be very interesting to see what that child says going on in the future. That is for sure. Butch, I'm going to get you to hold on here. We are going to go to break here at the top of the hour. Hour number one is done with Butch Witkowski's Strange Days. Butch is here the final Monday of every month talking about all things weird and strange. We're going to get into your questions as well coming up in hour number two, Butch's website, uforcop.com. That's U-F-O-R-C-O-P. Dot com. So make sure you check it on out if you have a report or you just want to see what he's doing. We'll talk to you on the other side of the hour. We'll be back. Every night on Space Out Radio, we have places for you to hang out. Hi, this is Carl. Join our SOR Space Travelers group on Facebook for live chat. On Twitter, using hashtag Spaced Out Radio, you can also join us in our Spreaker chat room. Check us out on Instagram at Dave Scott SOR. All of our archives are free on YouTube at Spaced Out Radio. By the way, I'll be watching you at your window until you do. Bye! Looking for the stories of the strange and weird that you will find hard to find anywhere else? Check out the SOR Newswire on our website. Our writers, led by Captain Shirk, are scouring the world for the oddest and most bizarre stories we can find. Everything from weird crime to suspenseful and paranormal. We're working hard for you to bring you the most intriguing news of your day. Check out the SOR Newswire at spacedoutradio.com today. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio Live with Dave Scott on the Deep Talk Radio Network. We are getting ready to relaunch the SOR Space Travelers Club at spacedoutradio.com. For $5 a month, you can join us for a plethora of features found nowhere else. Hang out in a private chat room during the show and after party. You can check out some exclusive content and a store specifically for you as well as a private listener forum where you can post your thoughts, stories, and pictures. The SOR Space Travelers Club, coming soon to spacedoutradio.com. The freedom to post what you want, when you want. That's the social media freedom you need. Social Media Freedom is the free app in your app store. No need to worry about going to jail or being shadow banned any longer. It's the freedom to say what you feel. The freedom to know Big Brother isn't watching. It's the way social media is supposed to be. Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Download from your app store today. On the first Tuesday of every month, I encourage you to come along for a journey with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You. Together, we will take a look at how to access the highest expression of yourself and change your life, consciousness, ET contact, health, and wellness. We can talk about it all. So come along for a spiritual ride with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You. 
only on Spaced Out Radio. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box, the iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Do you want to know what's really going on in your world? Do you have questions about who you can trust in the mainstream media? Then look no further than the Rebel Planet. Come get the straight answers right here at spacedoutradio.com. Join me, Jamie Sexton, creator of Rebel Planet News, as I fill you in on the stories behind the stories. All you truth seekers, be sure to tune in to Rebel Planet on spacedoutradio.com the third Thursday of every month. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. Hey, this is Canadian Paranormal Investigator Mike Moore. The third Wednesday of every month, I'll be teaming up with Dave Scott to bring you Ghosts of the Great White North. Each month, we will bring on guests from across Canada to discuss their ghostly encounters. Canada is a paranormal hotbed with stories you've never heard, so we're going to bring them to you. So get comfy in your Chesterfield, grab a donut, and join us, eh? Find your escape where time has no limits. It's about living today and cherishing the heritage of yesterday. A spirit of adventure for what is new with the nostalgia of the past. Your timepiece is a reflection of who you are. Life surrounded by beauty from the world around us to the soul within. EscapeWatches.com There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. The Call of the Wild is in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is one of the hottest bars and restaurants in the city. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose will rock you like a hurricane all night long. Great food with everything on the menu at $6.95. Near the corner of Nelson and Granville, get your horns up and come rock with us. The Moose Vancouver, the official rocking bar of Spaced Out Radio. You know, it's hard being the bad man of ufology, but that's just the way that I like it. This is Chris George Zuger, and I'll be hanging out with Dave Scott and SOR scientist Chris Cogswell for Reality Paranormal, the second Wednesday of every month. And our job is to break it down and come to conclusions as to what is really going on in the supernatural world. I'd love for you to join us right here on Spaced Out Radio. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. 
Check out our competitive pricing today. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Welcome back to the second hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Great to have you with us. Tomorrow night on the show, Kathleen Werstein joins us to talk about her spiritual experience. We get going at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern at spacedoutradio.com. Hi to everyone listening in on the SOR Radio Network, Deep Talk Radio, and Revolution Radio. Good to have you with us. Don't forget, you can check out our archives at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davy the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Cryptozoophobia. Cryptozoophobia is your password. Make sure you use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets the password each and every night right here on the mighty SOR. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. You can rock out to Bumblefoot. You can go shopping right now at our Spaced Out Radio store. Read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire and so much more. It's the final Monday of the month, which means it's time for Butch Witkowski's Strange Days. Butch is the creator and lead investigator for UFO Cop out of Pennsylvania. Their website, UFORCOP.com. That's UFORCOP.com. Butch, thank you so much for being here. First time of 2019. Good to have you back. Yeah. First time of 19. We went through 18, 17, 16. I don't even know how far we go back. <laughs> Way too long, way too long. It's gone way too fast, my friend, way too fast. Yeah. But we love that you are here, and, uh, you know, you, you bring in some very, very large audiences for us, so we thank you for that. I want to get to Jade's question right off the bat here, and Jade is asking, Butch, in regards to the recent UFO reports, what type of craft are people most reporting? Orbs, circular orbs, uh, white and orange and white and also orange in color. Uh, single craft and multiple craft seen at the same time. Um, the single craft, um, we might have five of those. Multiple crafts, uh, two or more uh, seen at the same time. Multiple witness, uh, probably about eight or ten. But uh, We've had, even though we've had some really crappy weather here with a lot, we've had a lot of rain, we've had a lot of cold weather, uh, we've had some snow, but not a big deal, uh, snow-wise. I mean, we haven't had 10 foot or anything like that, but um, I, I always call them annoying snows. Uh, we're due for t tomorrow, or actually for today we're due and tomorrow squalls, but uh, orbs was the number one um, sighting reports that we've received. We got Two, I believe, were um, they were described as saucer and saucer type in shape. Um, but um, what was kind of odd was we usually get triangles. We haven't had triangle report uh, in oh, at least three months. But the biggest one right now is orbs, uh, and uh, multiples are strange because they're not seen that often. Uh, singles are seen a lot, uh, but when you see two or three at a time, that's 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 very odd. Butch, why do you think it goes in such a different order? Okay, black triangles will be what everybody sees, and then it goes to these cigar shapes, and then the classic disc shapes and other strange shapes, and then we're back to orbs. It always seems to go in some sort of order. Have you noticed that as well in the patterns that you have investigated, or is this just an anomaly? No, I, I think it's pretty much an anomaly because, like I said, you know, you could get you could get an orb report tonight, uh, or you know, if you have a nice clear night, you'll get an orb report or two, uh, or you'll find uh, orb reports uh, around the country on the databases, and then in the mix you'll have you know some triangles, you'll have uh, rods, you'll have uh, um, odd shapes uh, like um, box squares, you know, uh, those type of things, triangles. Uh, but I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it, and it, and it depends. It, 
sometimes it depends on the part of the country too. Like down in Florida, uh, they get more triangles uh, than orbs. Uh, up here, we seem to get uh, more orbs than triangles or anything else. Um, it's just, I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it. It's just, you know, the way it is. Um, I mean, we've been out on star watches already where, you know, we've seen an orb or two, and then we'll see something else. You know, we'll see something triangle formation or something that is a triangle. Um, but um, multiples are strange. Uh, they don't. You don't get those. Letters. I think we've only had one report in all the time I've been doing this where we had multiples, where we had uh, four craft actually uh, flying. Now we've had reports in the past where we've had a a, a ball of light. Uh, emit smaller balls of light that kind of go off on their own and then retract back into the larger ball of light. We've had that. Um, that was in Berks County uh, about two years ago and very well documented. Uh, the guy that uh, was doing the uh, sky watch was one of our investigators, and, of course, he had a, a video cam, so we got it all on film. But I, I really don't think there's any rhyme and reason to it. Um, besides that, we don't even know what the hell they are anymore. I mean, they're definitely not ours. I mean, we don't have anything that can go that fast. It's just, um, it's just weird. <laughs> it's just, you know, I, I could have picked out, you know, doing something else for a career, but guess not. Well, you're a fellow weirdo. Why wouldn't you? Let's move on yeah. to my let's move on to Mike's question. He is saying, "Butch, have you done any research on all the people in the United States and Canada that go missing in parks under very strange circumstances, much like what David Politis does?" Uh, I have here in Pennsylvania. Uh I've not done anything outside of Pennsylvania. Um it's 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 very time consuming uh search researching reports and getting uh, police reports and getting people to get back to you and stuff like that. In PA, uh, we've had 39. Um, some are back at the turn of the century. Um, uh, some are in the 40s, a couple in the 50s, up until the uh, 90s. Uh, I think 98 was the last one. Um, but we had 39, 39, and they were all in state parks. What do you think is causing these missing people? It's a variety of things, Dave. We've had, you know, when we were doing that research, which was just last year we did it, uh, the young children never seemed to be found. So I'm assuming that was some kind of attack by an animal, a predator. Um, uh, older people, uh, we've had um, uh, two gentlemen. Uh, one guy was in his 60s, I believe. Uh, at his hunting camp, he walked off to go hunting that morning with a couple other guys. They got separated, and he got lost. Uh, and they found him, I think, a week later. He had died of a heart attack climbing a, a small hill. And the other guy was and actually in his late 70s who was uh, also hunting on his own property. And um, um, he fell. He fell and hit his head. And it was a pretty good wound. And he actually bled to death trying to get his way back. But they found him two days later. But, you know, the other ones that disappear that nothing's ever found, um, I guess you could attribute them to some type of attack or they just get lost. I mean, uh, we had one, uh, one where but the guy wasn't found for 15 years. Uh, I guess it was a bad storm came up and he got into a, uh, an old mine shaft. And I guess he got in a little too deep, and he fell into the mine shaft. And uh, some spelunkers actually found him 15 years later. So I guess there's all kind of causes that they go uh, and disappear. But um, you know that that's a whole other story there because that's you know I, I really got to give it to Dave Pilates because it's a lot of work to do that, and you know he's done it all over the country. Um, I got one of his new maps that show all the missing people and the stories and all that stuff on his books. 
And, I mean, kudos to him because I know what we went through just to find those 39, and it was almost a, a full year's work doing that. And, um, uh, I mean, he's been doing it for a lot of years. But it's amazing how many people do go missing, that's for sure. What about some of these stories that Polites comes up with where the shoes and socks are missing or clothes are folded and sitting on a rock somewhere in an area that has been searched over and over again multiple times, and then all of a sudden, boom, there's clothing there or there's the body, whether the person is, is dead or alive, a person is, is there. I mean, this is some very strange encounters that we have going on in these national parks, Butch. And in regards to the 39 that you looked at, were there any really strange happenstances with those? Only one that it, we're still kind of looking into it, but it was it's back in the 40s. And it was a young girl, 12 years old, um, rural area of Pennsylvania, uh, got dropped off uh, uh at, at her lane by a school, you know, a school bus, um, and to walk from where they dropped her off on the road and up the lane to her house uh, was, I think it's a quarter of a mile, and she would always pick up the mail and, uh, you know, at the box and walk up the lane to the house every day after school. And her mother saw her get off the bus, and she was halfway up the lane, and after a little bit, the little girl wasn't in the house anymore. So the mom went outside. She found the mail laying there. She found the little girl's uh, lunch bag uh, or box, whatever it was. I think it was a box. And she's gone. And there are no neighbors. There was nobody up and down that road. Um, she's just gone. So what grabbed her? Or, or how did she disappear that quick? I mean, from the time her mother saw her get off the bus till the time she saw her halfway up the lane, uh, we're talking a few minutes. We're not talking like a half hour. But the mail was laying there, bag was laying there, lunch bag, and she was gone. Never found her. I think she's number 14 on the missing list. Intriguing. Never was found. Either. Never found. Nope. Polite is never really gives an explanation to what he thinks it is. He he allows it to be of the reader's imagination, or if he's speaking, his audience's imagination as to what it is. With some of these cases that are out there happening in national parks, whether it's in Pennsylvania or in Yosemite, for instance, do you think that it is some sort of creature like Bigfoot that is taking people or do you think that it is, you know, natural phenomenon, maybe wolves, maybe cougars, bears, whatever it may be, some sort of predatory apex animal? Or do you think it's extraterrestrial, if you want to go that far, or maybe some sort of hidden mountain man? It could be either or or all. I mean, you have, you know, uh, a mountain lion will, will kill you with the first bite. Uh, a 12-year-old girl... Uh, against a wolf or, or, or a mountain lion or even a bear wouldn't stand a chance. But the, the thing that kind of deletes that from my thought is there's no blood. There's no, you know, there's no attack. There's no scruffling or shuffling of dirt or, you know, where somebody put up a struggle. I mean, even if somebody's grabbed, they put up some sort of a struggle. But uh, there's, there's no signs of that. There's no signs of a predator attack. So extraterrestrial, well, we all know how that works. Well, we know the first time I ever had you on this show was talking about human mutilations at the hands mm -hmm. of extraterrestrials. Is that still happening? Yes. Yeah. Uh, latest case was in... Um, Uh, it's in Eastern Europe. Uh, that just ran out right out of like Moldavia or, or you know Slobovia or something like that. One of those little places uh, where a um, a gentleman who was making deliveries uh, 
which was his job uh, for a store in a local town. Um, and I guess he was supposed to make deliveries uh, to one area of town uh, by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, never showed up. Of course, people started calling in, wanted to know where their stuff was, and pretty soon the owner and uh, uh, one of the workers from the place that he worked for went out looking for him. Uh, they couldn't find him. They looked around and didn't find him. They, you know, they, they eventually found his vehicle. Uh, there was some blood um, in the doorway of the vehicle. You know, as you open the door on the step there, uh, I believe it was a uh, like a step van type of truck. And um, they, they didn't find him for three weeks. And then um, uh, where the truck was found, uh, not too far from where the truck was found, there's uh, kind of a small. Um, I would probably call it a creek, but they have it's named a river. Um, the body was found floating in, in a marshy area, and it was pretty much dissected. There wasn't a whole lot left of him, and but it was classic. You know, the eyes were missing, jaw, uh, typical, a uh, typical uh, destruction, uh, like done on cattle. Same thing. Uh, the body was cremated, I think it said 45 minutes after it was found by the order of the police department or the, you know, constabulary, whatever they have there. And the people that, uh, he worked for, they closed up shop and moved. And the family that he belonged to, they, uh, moved, uh, within a week and a half after this body was found. Um, they were moved, uh, their, the, the build, uh, the owner of the, of the business that he worked for, uh, people said that the people that moved him and all the equipment and everything out of the building were military. Same with the family. The military truck showed up and soldiers came out to help him move. Nobody knows where they went. Nobody's, no, they don't even know where the guy has the new building that he's working out of. Intriguing. Classic. Any, any Classic. on this side of the pond? Uh... No, uh, uh, I'm, I kind of think it's um, Slovenia was the name of the country, or the yeah, Slovenia. Uh, the the guy was 27 years old. Um, uh, wasn't married, had no kids or anything like that. Um, lived with his parents, and uh, he was found butchered in typical human mutilation, cow mutilation style. Intriguing. Let's get to another question from our audience here. So we've got about five minutes before we got to take our break at the bottom of the hour. Tripp is asking, sure. with the procedures Bush goes through, or you, Bush, go through, and the reports you fill out, have you thought about creating an app to help? Or do you think the trolls would ruin it with putting false reports and sightings in? Uh, we we do have an app that we use, the investigators and researchers use on the team. Uh, it's not open to the public, mainly for that reason, that people would probably flood it with hoax reports. Do you think that's the way to go? Uh, for us, it is right now. Um, we have uh, four databases that we maintain for us. They're not open to the public. Um, I know a guy that did that. He, he had a great database going for UFOs uh, a number of years back. And next thing you know, all these reports were being put up on other websites and being distorted and, you know, uh, uh, something that was actually just something that was seen flying in the sky now landed and monsters got out of it and they ripped apart a bunch of cattle and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? They just changed everything around and put it on some blog site. And he just got tired of it, and he shut it down. Uh, so you got to be careful with databases. Now, if somebody would call me and say, uh, hey, Butch, do you have anything from uh, uh, 1985 in uh, Westminster, New York? Uh, this is what was seen. Is Was there any report on it or anything happened with that report or anything like that? I can look and find that. I can go look into that year and that area and that town and everything else. As long as I have that information, I can get into any one of the four databases and do that. And I do that for a lot of people. I do it for other researchers. Um, it's amazing that, you know, that I do know of a couple of researchers out there that still do not use a computer. 
<laughs> I don't know how they do it, but they don't. Uh, I find that just very strange. Uh, but um, it was a lot of work putting those together. I started those in 2003, 2002. So they've grown over the years. And um, But they're, they're handy. I mean, they're not as accurate as I think they, sh they could be or should be. Uh, but they give me enough information that I could take that little bit that I have there or whatever I do have and, you know, make connections to a police department or a rescue squad or or um, look up military information or uh, do some background research from that little bit of information to see if anything has happened in that time period before that time period or after that time period that would resemble what the report was originally or what the person wants to know about. And uh, I've I've had people, you know, we don't go we don't go back that far. I think I think it's the one starts the earliest the one starts at 1955. That's that goes back the longest. Uh, other ones are in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and up through until you know these today. Uh, but uh, we don't put them in the database until they're completed. Um, I never found any rhyme or reason to putting something in a database that wasn't completed because that's like saying, well, you know, here's your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but we don't have any peanut butter and jelly sandwich, so here's the bread. You know, it, it just it just works out that way. It just it's better to do it that way. Just put them in when they're completed. And but uh, if it's somebody that just wants information like a location, and I and I have the location, you know, I'll have the location or the time or day that something was seen, although I don't have the rest of it put together yet. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll give them that information, no problem. To the Stars Academy, as we got about a minute to go here, has an app for reporting UFOs. How dangerous mm -hmm. can that be for people, in your opinion, who are, and whether it's to the Stars or anybody, you know, for their own security issues, for giving their information over an app? Um, I have an app. There's an app on my website that you can uh, request information. Uh, what I what I really ask for there is, you know, tell me what you got, and then tell me how to get a hold of you. Or if you can't get a hold, you don't want me to call you, you can call me. You know, just tell me what you want, how you want to do this. Uh, I do not give out any information on anybody. I never have and never will. Um, it, it, that's just bad business, and that it doesn't happen a lot. But when it does happen, man, that cannot be a disaster. I, um, I've had people call up and ask me, you know, well, who reported this? Well, it's none of your business. Well, where did it happen? That's none of your business either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I, I've never asked anybody if they wanted to give right. out their information. I've had people, I've had people say, hey, somebody, if you want to give out my name and stuff, go ahead. And I'm more like, you don't want to do that. No, you, know, you definitely uh, don't. Butch, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we got to hop out at the bottom of the hour. Butch Wachowski's Strange Days continues right after the break here on Spaced Out Radio. We'll be right back. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio live with Dave Scott on the Deep Talk Radio Network. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hi there, this is Geraldina Roscoe from San Francisco's Bay Area Meditation. I invite you to join me the first Tuesday of every month with Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's The Spiritual You. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's time for you to take some time for you. We'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality. So come join us for The Spiritual You. 
You know, it's hard being the bad man of ufology, but that's just the way that I like it. This is Chris George Zuger, and I'll be hanging out with Dave Scott and SOR scientist Chris Cogswell for Reality Paranormal, the second Wednesday of every month. And our job is to break it down and come to conclusions as to what is really going on in the supernatural world. I'd love for you to join us right here on Spaced Out Radio. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are, and what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. Are you tired of being blocked, shadow banned, or placed in jail for simply posting your thoughts on social media? Social Media Freedom can take care of that for you. Social Media Freedom is the newest and one of the best free new apps that allows you the freedom to post what you want, when you want. It takes seconds to download from your app store. Come join the tribe at Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there, this is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me, Chris Zuger, and Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything has an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best five dollars a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. 
Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Welcome back to the second half of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Always a pleasure to be sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters, broadcasting to you live wherever you may be. Tonight, it's the final Monday of the month, which means it's time for Butch Witkowski's Strange Days. It happens the final Monday of every month. Butch's next appearance will be Monday, February 25th. And Butch, we're glad to have you back, my friend. Let me give your website a shout out, uforcop.com. That's U-F-O-R-C-O-P.com. If you want to check it out, welcome back, Butch. Thank you, sir. Let's get to to the audience questions right now. Uh, BTO is asking, with a lot of these abductions, could they rather be some sort of interdimensional shift, some sort of portal that opens up and these so-called abductees inadvertently enter. Uh, yes, I, 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 there are many reasons for abductions, uh, but um, portals and you know interdimensional shifts are not out of the question at all. Uh, only because the way some of the some of the abductions are described, where uh, you know, people will be in a room, they'll be in a bedroom, or the whatever, and you know. A hole will open up in a wall, or a window will, will disappear, and next thing you know, they're outside. Uh, yeah, that's that's very possible. Uh, we, we we just don't, you know, abductions are so strange because so many there were so many in the very beginning there were so many hoaxes of abductions, and then you know everybody got involved in them. You had uh, you know scientists getting involved. You had uh, uh, hypnotherapy guys getting involved, and it just kind of got cluttered up, and then uh, I always tell, you know, my guys when they're going on an abduction case, when you get into the house, look around, see what books are on the shelves. You know, they got all the books on abduction. Pretty much they just talk themselves into it. But there are those ones that are just, you know, uh, you can't explain it. Uh, and there's evidence, you know, they, they've either got uh, – uh, an implant or uh, there's uh, visual signs of something that happened. Um, there was one case that was dis- uh, discussed at the X conference in Washington, D.C. a number of years ago and uh, where uh, the guy claimed that something, uh, a, a, a gray climbed in the window and uh, he was gone for hours and hours and he wound up in the living room, and when he went into the bedroom, there were actually uh, prints, marks on the inside of the window. Uh, and uh, Dr. Lear, uh, rest his soul, uh, he actually paid to have that wall cut out <laughs> and had it tested, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, have a new wall put in for the guy in window. And he was discussing it and showing pictures of it at the uh, uh, X conference. And it's three fingers. You can see it. I mean, plain as day. Um, so, I mean, I, I occur. At the same time, I truly believe there's a lot of hoaxes out there or a lot of lonely people that talk themselves into it. Um, 
the, those lonely widows, uh, I can't even count how many of those we've been involved in, um, where they just want somebody to talk to. So they'll, they come up with this fantastic story on abduction, and you get to the house, and they have more books on abduction than I have in my library. Interesting. But, um, there's really never been anybody that has solved anything in the abduction scenario. I mean, there's been some really strange stuff happening where cars have been picked up, and there's been witnesses that seen it. Uh, there was a case in Missouri where a lady's coming along a back road, and there's a tractor trailer behind her uh, because on, on most of the roads, the big roads in Missouri, you got to run the access roads to make a turnaround or cross over. You just can't do it off the main four or six or eight lane highways. And she was driving, and the truck driver said, next thing you know, the car was, there was light, shiny light, and, and it lifted off the ground, and it was picked up and put and set over in a field. And he watched it. And there was damage to the car, and, and uh, there was, uh, you know, some of the uh, parts of the car were burned and stuff like that. And, you know, that wasn't, that was definitely extraterrestrial. Let's move on to Shar's question. She is asking, has anyone working on any of these topics ever been threatened? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, no problem there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, know, you, you got to elaborate on that. Um, when I was work, I was working on uh, 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 a mutilation case. And uh, I got a phone call. And uh, the guy just said, is this Butch? And I said, yes. And he said, are you the one handling this blah, blah, blah case? And I said, yes. And he said, you need to back off. Forget it. Just get away from the case. I won't be telling you again. And he hung up. And I have caller ID on that phone. And I looked at the phone. I called it back. And there was no, it didn't, nothing happened. It was a deadline. So I don't know who it was, but I'm still here. And they're not here. So I'm happy, happy. Uh, I've known research. I know researchers have gotten calls from actually police departments uh, that identify themselves and say, "You need to back off." You know, this is an investigation. We don't want you muttering it up or whatever they come up with. But yeah, they, yeah, they get threatened. And then if you uh, really want to know how many were killed, uh, just go to the website. They're killing our researchers on. You just Google that, and there's a whole list of people that were killed. Researchers. You know, you can get close. But when you get way too close, where you can implicate the government or whoever, you're going to have an accident. I mean, if they'll throw an admiral out of a hospital window, what makes you think that you're safe? Or you have a perfect perfect health record, and all of a sudden you come down with the strangest case of cancer anybody's ever discovered, and a week after they bury you, your wife comes down with the same strange cancer, and she dies, and that's the end of the McDonald's. Their research came to an end. Hmm. Okay. In regards to the idea that somebody would threaten you, is that a government official, a police official, some sort of search and rescue? It could be anybody, Dave. You don't know who it is. They don't give their name. So take me through that scenario. Take me through that scenario when it happens. What's that? Take me through that what? scenario when it happens. It was just um, uh, uh, just a phone call, and I was just told to back off, you know, uh, kind of like no need for you to stick your nose into this, just forget it, and a hang-up. Uh, then again, I've been contacted by Bigelow Aerospace uh, by one of their investigators who identified himself and uh, wanted to know about a case I was working on. And I said, why do you want to know about it? And he said, well, we have an interest in it. I said, well, when I'm done with it, you can read about it. Okay, that was it. He hung up, and that was the end of that. So it's not that there's always a threat, but, you know, uh, there was a gentleman in Philadelphia, a researcher in Philadelphia. Um, I don't really know what he was working on. It had something to do with the military base down there. Um, but... Um, I ran into him at a conference, and I said, aren't you doing this anyway? I, I haven't seen any of your work or anything like that. You know, we haven't heard of you. Or what, what's, what's going on? He said he got a phone call, and he said, that's all I'm going to tell you. He said, but I'm not going to put my wife and kids on, on the line for this. I went, oh, okay. So I guess 
If you get too close to something, like the McDonald's, the husband and wife I just mentioned, they were going to mm-hmm. publish a book with a lot of stuff in it that the government didn't want out there at that time. And, you know, strange case of cancer, and next thing you know, she gets a strange case of cancer. You've had uh, researchers that got locked into uh, labs, uh, you know, where it was unsafe to be locked in. <laughs> um, uh, suicides, but their hands were tied, and they shot themselves in the back of the head twice. And it just there's so many. I mean, on that website, it says who's killing our researchers. I think it's the name of it. Or just just put in um, they're killing. Or, or what, another one you can put Google is um, uh, dead UFO researchers. There's a whole list of them. I mean, you know, some famous ones and some not so famous. Hit by cars, run off the road, poisoned, uh, shot, stabbed, mugged, um, suicide. There's just tons of them. And they go back a long way. Let's move on to Mike's question. He is asking, Butch, do you have any info on an older UFO sighting in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, at the airport on January 19th, 2019? Sorry, I read that wrong. Not an old sighting, a a newer sighting just a while ago. Sorry, Mike. My guy in Harrisburg is working on that case. Uh, I haven't seen the report yet. Uh, you know, there was some kind of sighting at the uh, uh, car, uh, right? When you get into Carlisle, Pennsylvania, it's it's kind of like a waypoint because you you can go you can go eighty one north, eighty one south, um, eighty north, eighty uh, um, east on west on eighty. Uh, they take their multi state transfers, and there's a lot of trucking companies there, big trucking companies. You know, there'd be one hundred fifty, two hundred tractor trailers parked. They're all over the place. There's like eight or different, eight or ten different companies there. It's like a waypoint, and um, that's where I, I'm understanding because I didn't see it yet. But that's where I'm understanding that a UFO was seen above one of the trucking companies by a couple drivers. That's close, very close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from here to from where I'm sitting right now to there is probably about 45 minutes. I want to get into some Bigfoot here because. Sure. We haven't really got into Bigfoot tonight. You say the sightings are up in your area. By what percentage? Oh, God. Um, If I go by last year, they're probably up 25%, 30%. Interesting. Very Mm -hmm. interesting. Why do you think that is? I don't know. It's I mean, weird. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's wintertime. Like I, well, you know, and that's normally we don't get a lot of reports in the wintertime because we have hunting season. The, our woods are packed with hunters. I mean, what they have last year, I think they put out uh, over a quarter or uh, what was it? Wait, 335,000 hunting permits in our state. Uh, and that's just for deer. And then you got bear season, you got bow season, you got flintlock season, you got you know, uh, there's all kind of seasons, and reports usually when that's going on, they're not, they, they just don't exist. You know, if you get one report, you're like, wow, that's that's odd, and not now. We had them all through hunting season last year, and they're still coming in. So, I, I, I don't have, I, I just don't have an explanation why. But if your reports are, are increasing, especially mm-hmm. with the the brutal winter that is hitting the East Coast, what do you think is causing all of this? Because with the winter time and people huddled inside more trying to stay warm, you would think there would be less sightings. It could be a food issue. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, I see that. Uh, but mixed in with all of our, this state's so screwed up, it's unbelievable, but mixed in with all of our massive game lands and state parks that we have in the state, you have farms everywhere, uh, uh, orchards all over the state, uh, apple orchards, um, uh, plums, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, they're, they're everywhere. Um, uh, but 
you know, when the weather gets cold, that, I mean, that stuff's not available anymore. There was one case that we looked into, and, and um, it was actually another group's case, and we were just helping them with some of the information. But they had an apple orchard that stored uh, apples to make, um, it's a special apple. They make, uh, they mix it with beer. It's like a hard cider. I think they call it hard cider. But they grow that special apple there, and they put them in storage, in cold storage, uh, as they, as, you know, as they collect off the orchard, they put them into cold storage, and they get picked up, and they put more in cold storage, and they kind of grow them in succession. And it was at the end of the season, and their season ends like in November, which is odd to me. So I guess these are pretty hardy apples, but uh, something like tore a barn door off to get to those apples and was in there for quite a while because a lot of those apples were all, you know, just devastated, chewed up, and there was a, a bunch missing, you know, uh, just because they're in sacks, you know. Uh, so whatever got into them, and that could have been a bear. I mean, I don't know of many bears tearing off uh, barn doors. Barn doors are pretty big. But um, I don't know what became of that case. Oh, I should check on that. But we weren't involved in it other than we were giving them some information and some mapping uh, software that they needed. But in regards to the Sasquatch, what do you think they would be looking for? Because I don't see them as being dumpster divers. Mm -mm. But um, there, there were, a rep well, there were two reports, I believe, out in western Pennsylvania, uh, below Pittsburgh, and that, I think it was Greene County where they had pictures of a, of a uh, it doesn't, all you're seeing is uh, a, a shadow of something big and tall dumpster diving uh, behind a uh, uh, convenience store. And um, they claimed that that was a Bigfoot. Uh, I don't even remember the researcher that was on that. I don't, I don't think it was Stan Gordon, though. But, uh, yeah, they've been known to dumpster dive. But, again, that didn't make a whole lot of sense either because that was the middle of the summer. So, and, you know, we don't even know what they eat. We've never gotten any of their scat. We don't know what they eat. Are they, are they strictly meat eaters? Or are they, you know, berries or grass or whatever they can get their hands on? It's, it's very strange you know, for all the 50 plus years that we've been watching, looking, not me so, so much. I mean, I've only been at this cryptid stuff for a couple of years, but all the reports that I've read, I mean, you know, all, all the reports that have been written, all the, all the information, all the money that's been spent, uh, we know very little about these creatures, very little. I mean, if I had to write a whole page of what I know about Bigfoot, I don't think I'd fill half the page. There ain't that much. You know what they look like. You know how tall they are. You know what they approximately weigh. You know the size of their foot approximately. You know, uh, do you have hair? No. Do you have scat? No. Do you have any DNA? No. Do you have a body? No. Do you have any remnants of a body? No. So for 50 plus years, other than a lot of good reports and sightings, we don't have any information on these things which is kind of disheartening sometimes, kind of pisses me off, I guess. So in these wintertime sightings that we are seeing right now, and, mm -hmm. let, uh, and let's be honest, we're not talking hundreds of sightings here. We're talking how many? Oh, uh, about, uh, uh, about uh, 13, 14. Okay, so... It, it's still not a lot, but it, is it out of the ordinary for this type of action in January? Yes. Yeah, it is. I looked up. We hadn't had anything. Uh, uh, our first reports usually start in um, April, May, late April, May. Uh, last year, it was the uh, first report came in. That was up in Warfordsburg, PA. That was in uh, mid-April where a gentleman was uh, out in his field uh, on his tractor cutting down grass, 
and a tree line. He looked over the tree line, and um, um, uh, a Bigfoot or a creature he described as Bigfoot was uh, pulling uh, sickle pears off a tree. Wow. Just trying to stay as long as he was on, As long as he was on the tractor, it just kept doing what it was doing. The minute his, he stepped off the tractor, it took off. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it wasn't that. interesting. Yeah, there were there were three groups that we were there, and two other groups, uh, th- three groups. We met up there. We scoured that whole friggin' mountain, and uh, they found some prints. They found some. Uh, they found the path where he took through, and he broke down a lot of branches and bushes. He just tore through there. We couldn't even walk through it, uh, but you know, following his path or whatever. Uh, it went through there like a bulldozer. In regards to these sightings that people are having right now, are they getting closer to residential areas? Yes, they are. Um, we've had, um, on our end, uh, bipedals um, in a residential area twice. Uh once in a townhouse community and the other one on, you know, just a, a rural street with housing on it that was actually following a, uh, a young girl who was walking her dog all the way home. Um, there was a, uh, I believe that, yeah, that was a Bigfoot sighting. Uh, that was up in really, that was right on the New York line, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, uh, where it's a uh, mobile home park, and it's an older park, but it's a nice park, you know, very well maintained. Very you know, people live there all their lives; they've been there all their lives. Uh, and um, a guy was washing his car, and it was getting dark, you know, at that time of night. And he was wrapping up the hose and stuff, and he turned around and he saw this thing walk through his yard and the neighbor's yard and walk into the woods. Interesting, and right there, Butch. Hold that thought. We're going to continue with Bigfoot and bipedal canine talk. Heading into the final half hour with Butch Rakowski on Strange Days right here on Spaced Out Radio. we got another half hour with Butch. We'll be back right after this. out with Spaced Out Radio, where we own the night. This is Carl. You can follow Dave on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and during the show, use the hashtag Spaced Out Radio to chat with us live. On Instagram, at Dave Scott S-O-R. On Facebook, give our page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. S-O-R archives are free on YouTube, at Spaced Out Radio. Come join us, or I will come join you. See you at your window. At SpacedOutRadio.com, we have a little bit of everything for you to stay up late. So while you're there, check out our SOR Newswire, where our team brings you stories of the weird and strange to the WTF from around the globe. News on Bigfoot, UFOs, paranormal, Darwinian-type crime tales. It's the stories that the mainstream media usually won't touch. Well, we got them all on the SOR Newswire, only at SpacedOutRadio.com. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio Live with Dave Scott on the Deep Talk Radio Network. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. The freedom to post what you want, when you want. That's the social media freedom you need. Social media freedom is the free app in your app store 
No need to worry about going to jail or being shadow banned any longer. It's the freedom to say what you feel. The freedom to know Big Brother isn't watching. It's the way social media is supposed to be. Social media freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Download from your app store today. The Call of the Wild is in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is one of the hottest bars and restaurants in the city. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose will rock you like a hurricane all night long. Great food with everything on the menu at $6.95. Near the corner of Nelson and Granville, get your horns up and come rock with us. The Moose Vancouver, the official rocking bar of Spaced Out Radio. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. On the first Tuesday of every month, I encourage you to come along for a journey with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You. Together, we will take a look at how to access the highest expression of yourself and change your life, consciousness, ET contact, health, and wellness. We can talk about it all. So come along for a spiritual ride with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You, only on Spaced Out Radio. Hey, this is Canadian Paranormal Investigator Mike Moore. The third Wednesday of every month, I'll be teaming up with Dave Scott to bring you Ghosts of the Great White North. Each month, we will bring on guests from across Canada to discuss their ghostly encounters. Canada is a paranormal hotbed with stories you've never heard, so we're going to bring them to you. So get comfy in your Chesterfield, grab a donut, and join us, eh? We are getting ready to relaunch the SOR Space Travelers Club at spacedoutradio.com. For $5 a month, you can join us for a plethora of features found nowhere else. Hang out in a private chat room during the show and after party. You can check out some exclusive content and a store specifically for you, as well as a private listener forum where you can post your thoughts, stories, and pictures. The SOR Space Travelers Club, coming soon to spacedoutradio.com. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Find your escape where time has no limits. It's about living today and cherishing the heritage of yesterday. A spirit of adventure for what is new with the nostalgia of the past. Your timepiece is a reflection of who you are. Life surrounded by beauty from the world around us to the soul within. Escapewatches.com There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. 
You know, it's hard being the bad man of ufology, but that's just the way that I like it. This is Chris George Zuger, and I'll be hanging out with Dave Scott and SOR scientist Chris Cogswell for Reality Paranormal, the second Wednesday of every month. And our job is to break it down and come to conclusions as to what is really going on in the supernatural world. I'd love for you to join us right here on Spaced Out Radio. Do you want to know what's really going on in your world? Do you have questions about who you can trust in the mainstream media? Then look no further than the Rebel Planet. Come get the straight answers right here at spacedoutradio.com. Join me, Jamie Sexton, creator of Rebel Planet News, as I fill you in on the stories behind the stories. All you truth seekers, be sure to tune in to Rebel Planet on spacedoutradio.com the third Thursday of every month. you like to connect with us head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info now back to dave scott and sor welcome back to the third and final hour of spaced out radio tonight i am your host dave scott great to have you with us tomorrow night on the show kathleen Wurstein joins us we're going to talk about a great spiritual adventure that she went on called Guiding Kathy. We get going at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern at spacedoutradio.com. Hi to everyone listening in on the SOR Radio Network, Deep Talk Radio, along with Revolution Radio. Good to have you with us. And, of course, you can check out all of our archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spacedoutradio. Just do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Cryptozoophobia. Cryptozoophobia is your password. Make sure you use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on the mighty SOR. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. You can rock out to Bumblefoot, go shopping at our Spaced Out Radio store, and, of course, you can read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire at spacedoutradio.com. For the final time tonight, we introduce Butch Witkowski from UF4 Cop out of Pennsylvania. Butch joins us the final Monday of every month to talk everything weird, strange, obtuse in the land of cryptids, UFOs, ghosts, and so much more. His website, uf4cop.com. Butch, welcome back. Time's flying tonight. Now, right before the break, we were talking about Bigfoot and the increase in sightings, Mm -hmm. especially with the way the weather has been this winter, Butch. Are we seeing an increase of regular animals in general, deer, coyotes, any type of wild animal out there searching for food at this time? Uh, Coyotes, yes. Uh, Koi wolves, yes. Lots of deer. Lots of deer. Um, a lot of rabbit tracks in my backyard, so they're out. Squirrels. Um, yeah, I think pretty much everything's moving around. Because, well, even though we've had a lot of rain, and we've had a lot of cold, and we've had some snow, and really windy weather, we've had some days where we've been up in the 50s. You know, 55, 55, 58 degrees, which is odd for this time of year. But, um, yeah, I think pretty much everything's been moving around. Um, on the street that I live on, um, there's a tree line that goes aside of my home and then behind my home and up the line. And um, I, was out, I, I was out in the shed doing something. I came out of the shed and there was a deer walked out, <laughs> a buck, uh, walked out of the woods, just kind of sniffed around a little bit, turned around, walked back in. So, yeah, pretty much everything's still moving. So with that, you've also seen an increase in cases for this bipedal canine that you have been working on for the last couple of years. Yes. Yeah. The um, last year at this time, we didn't have anything. uh, Normally, we start getting those reports like in May you know, when the weather breaks. And this year, we've, we've pretty much been steady with them from all the way through last year and now into this year. We have two this month. Hmm. 
whereabouts have they been in location? Um, both in uh, within our like and loop. We've till this. We have fifty eight count till right now um, uh, that we've documented. We have the the two that we just got. We have just started on. Uh, and they're all within the, every one of them, including the, the new ones, are within the lichen loop. Our lichen loop. We have no reports of that creature outside the lichen loop. None, not one. They're all within that loop, which is kind of crazy. I mean, but it's 11 million acres, so I guess there's plenty of room to run around. But that in, inside that loop, we have some of the biggest uh, state parks and state game lands in in the whole state. So either they found a home they're happy with, or um, they're territorial and they just stay where they are. Do you think they keep moving though, Butch? Like, has any bedding areas been found for these creatures, or something that looks like? Uh, maybe some underground hole that they are living in or cave system. What's that area like? We're, we're just now uh, getting ready to do the caves. Uh, we haven't done those up until now and some uh, old factories uh, in that area uh, that we're going to be going after. We haven't done those yet. We've basically been following up on the cases that were presented as they were presented you know, where they came out of the woods or, or they were standing along the highway or stuff like that. But um, uh, I, being that they stay within the loop, it's either a very small group or it could be an individual, you know, because um, some of the reports are very close. Like the very first two we had, there was only 10 miles spread between the two reports. So that could have been the same one. Um, but they don't stay that way. They like you may have one uh, at one end of the loop, and then maybe a week or two later, you have one at the other end of the loop. Now, could it be the same one? Yeah. But could there be more than one? Yes. Uh, we just don't know that. Uh, the only evidence we've gotten so far has been an impression, uh, a, a foot impression. Um, it wasn't even good enough to cast. It was just an impression. So. Um, but the eyewitness testimony is uncanny because it's identical. I mean, I can look at report number one's description of what they saw and look at the very last one that I got description of what they saw, and it's just, they're matching. They're just identical. Everybody's seeing the same thing, the same, the same whatever it is, creature, animal, relic. I don't know what it is. I mean, like I said before, I've said it all the time, you know, we, we've been the regular route with trying to do it with cameras and stuff like that. But the only way we're going to be able to prove this is if we get it on a FLIR device. Uh, you know, thermal imaging is the only way you're going to prove it. Do you think but you've been close? Being, yes, we have. I think so. When we were up in uh, Cambria, uh, yeah, Cambria County, uh, Clearfield County, we were close, yeah. I think we were close, but... Um, you know, uh, at that point, it was very early on in our investigation techniques, so we were still using, you know, digital cameras and, and infrared and uh, never gave a thought to pulling the thermal imaging out. But now that's all we, you know, we still carry the cameras and stuff. I mean, we have all that, but we still rely heavily on thermal imaging because nothing hides from a flare. I don't care what it is. If it's there, it's going to show up. And if you're seeing it, it's got to be there. So uh, the camera traps we have set up now are all FLIR device. So if it trips one, it's going to be there. It's going to be there. I mean, uh, it'll be on video. It'll be on still photograph. But it's going to be a FLIR. And that's really the only thing we got. What amazes me is that the Bigfoot guys, very few people use a FLIR. Now, I understand they're expensive and all that. And I, I get that. But you would think that, you know, if you're going out there and spending all that other, you know, money on everything else, why wouldn't you invest in a FLIR where, you know, it 
every picture that's ever been taken of Bigfoot's fuzzy. So just take a flur, you know, use a flur device. All of, almost all the flurs, I can't think of but two little ones that don't have the video picture taking capability. We have the larger models that have picture and video or either one, whatever you want to use. Um, same with the camera traps, they can be photographed, you know, they can take a single shot or they can uh, do video. Um, it's the only way you're going to be able to prove it. I don't know of any other way to prove it. Because you know if you take a digital photograph, 900 people jump all over the place saying you doctored it. So you can't doctor a flirt. It's just like using a Polaroid camera. You can't doctor a Polaroid or black and white film. And we still carry black and white film cameras for evidence gathering. You know, we'll take the digital pictures, but then we're going to take black and white film at the same time. This leads so to Renee's right. question. Sorry, Butch, I cut you off there. Okay. No, no, go ahead. This leads to Renee's question. She's saying... Have you been out where this bipedal canine is? We know you have. If so, what evidence have you seen of this creature? Only that impression. It was the only thing we ever found. And the area we were in was another giveaway that something was there that we didn't know what it was. Uh, I think I talked about that before on the show. We were on uh, one of the expeditions where... We couldn't keep a fire lit at night. Uh, we were, it was a full moon weekend, uh, a bright hunter's full moon. Uh, uh, we were in a game land where there were coyotes, coy wolves, bears, deer, uh, uh, eagles, hawks, uh, everything that walks or crawls or sleeks. Uh, and we heard zero. Our recorders picked up nothing, not a sound for the whole weekend. Uh, the wind changed from north to south, east to west. The only place that happens is in the thermals in the Himalayas. It was known northeast by southwest or anything. It was north, south, east, west. That's how the weather station was picking it up. Um, so uh, the quietness, uh, even the, the game warden and the uh, park rangers stopped by to check on us every now and then. Uh, said the same thing. It's awful quiet. You know, usually with a full moon, you hear everything, but we didn't hear a sound, nor with thermal or infrared did we see any animal of any type flying or on the ground or any place else that whole weekend. And that park, that, that, that particular state park has one of the largest uh, bear and deer populations in our state, and we didn't see or hear anything. So that was very odd, very strange. Do you think they were scared out of the area? I, well, you know, when when there's a predator in an area, everything is quiet. And this is true. You know, so the, there was something around, um, but we we saw absolutely or heard nothing, zero, not a. We didn't pick up a sound. We didn't see anything, even with the thermal. You know, we would have seen something, bug, bird, heard a bird, anything, nothing, zero, not a sound. And it took us two days to figure that out. We were sitting there having breakfast, and I said, you know something, two nights we've been here, we haven't heard anything, have we? And we checked all the recorders that we had out, and nothing, just blank, quiet, dead quiet. But the wind, that was the one that really baffled me. Why was my, I thought, first I thought the weather station, which cost me a small fortune, was set up 100 feet away from the camp, and that records constantly. You know, it's, it ships back into the computer in the truck wirelessly. Um, anything that changes every one and a half seconds. And although the temperature remained the same and, you know, humidity and all that garbage, the wind changed. It would change north to south, and then it would change east to west. And I did that the whole weekend. So when I got back, I called the, the weather bureau up at Penn State University. And I talked to the weather guy up there, and I said, either you guys told me to get a piece of junk 
for a weather station or I spent a lot of money for a weather station. You guys owe me some money. And he said, what's going on? And I told him, and I said, I have the SD card. I said, I'm going to download it right now and send it to you. I said, you tell me what's wrong with this picture. And he stayed on the phone, and I said, it goes, the wind just went north, south, east, west. He said, well, that's a common occurrence. Unfortunately, he said, it's only a common occurrence in the higher thermals of the Himalayas. I went, oh. So he said, where were you? And I told him, and he said, that's impossible. I said, hey, you're looking at it, buddy. And he said, yeah, it's there, north, south, east, west. I said, yeah, and never changed all weekend. So that was another strange thing that happened. So there was something there in that area. There was there was something there watching us or or in the general area that caused those issues. And the fact that we couldn't keep a fire going. All day long we had a fire. It was cold. So all day long we had a fire going, right? Uh, come dark, we couldn't keep the fire going if we poured, when we were pouring accelerant on it. Wouldn't stay. It, it, would flare, it would flare up, and the minute the accelerant was gone, it would die down to nothing. I haven't figured that out. Yes, that is absolutely weird. That every time I think of that, it just uh, creeps me out. Really, it really does. That you could be there that amount of time, and all those things happen, and then there's all those things that should have happened that didn't, like the sounds. I mean, they have packs of coyote, well, uh, coy wolves running around, packs of eight and ten running all over the place. Because he said, if you see them, shoot them. He said, that's what we do. We didn't hear a howl. It was a bright full moon. I mean, it was almost daylight outside. That's how bright the moon was. Not a sound, not a howl, not a bark, not a whimper, not a bird tweet, not a rustle in the bushes, nothing, zero. I could have locked myself in a closet here in my office and probably would have been exactly the same as I did up there. Nothing. Let's get to Tripp's question. I really like this question that he's asking. He says, throughout history, Butch, there's been hunters that have used the hides of animals to help steer herds and divide herds. What are your thoughts on the dogman actually being ghosts of hunters killed in the past? Of all the research I did on the bipedals, um, and I've probably mentioned this before, I went back to see what I could find in history in Pennsylvania. And in 1868, in a newspaper out of Erie, Pennsylvania, long defunct, uh, there was an article, and it was a farmer uh, relating his story to the newspaper and the local constabulary uh, about this creature and he describes exactly the same description we get today of this thing going after his goats. I forget if it was goats or sheep. I think it was sheep. And he took a shot at it, and um, they didn't see it anymore, but he didn't, he didn't hit it. So, you know, I've been asked a thousand times what I think it is, and to be honest and truthful about it, I don't know what it is. It's the same. It's been there a long time. The, 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 the description in 1868, I can take it and put it to one of my descriptions from the one we got the other day, and it's exactly the same. Size, shape, head, chest, arms, hock legs, I mean, everything. Color, uh, glowing yellow eyes, the whole bit. It's, it's exactly the same thing. So in my little mind, I, I just think it's a relic. I think it's been here a long time. It's going to be here a long time, and it's, it's there. It is what it is. What it is, I have no idea. Is it a guardian? Uh, could be. Is it just another apex predator out there? Could be. Uh, you know, there's just not a, uh, there's not an answer for it. And although I've tried to come up with answers, uh, we all have. Uh, what it could be or what it is, we don't have an answer. I, I have no more. Uh, I mean, I have. The one thing I have over the Bigfoot reports is Bigfoot reports are always different. Everybody sees something different. These things, which have been encountered close up, 58 reports, not counting the two we just got, all the descriptions of this thing are exactly the same. 
and everybody that encounters them has the exact same mental, uh, I'm going to say telepathic um, suggestion that you need to leave or don't shoot or things are going to get real bad real quick. And uh, I've had game wardens carrying weapons encounter these things. I've had uh, hunters encounter these things. And they're just, they just got something that comes into their head, like you pull that trigger and it's going to be a bad day in Black Rock. So whatever this thing is, does it have some type of a connection to uh, mind control of some sort or that it can put that into your head that you don't want to do this? Um, it's, uh, it's very, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. I mean, we've looked at everything from werewolves. We went back in history. I bought books up the yin yang on werewolves that go back, uh, to the Roman times. Um, uh, nothing is even close to this, this, whatever it is. And, um, it's not a dog man. It's definitely not a dog man. Dog man descriptions are totally different. They're shorter. They're in statue, uh, in stature, uh, in height. In in um, they have tails. Uh, they have floppy ears. They're multicolored. Uh, they walk on all fours. This thing has never been seen on all fours. Uh, dog man um, have canine uh, attributes in looks and shape and size. Um, they run when they're seen. This thing doesn't run. This thing just stands its ground. Like, it's almost defiant. Like, okay, you're here, now what do you want to do about it? And, you know, these people that see it, they don't want to do anything about it. They want to get the hell out of Dodge. I really don't know what it is, Dave. Uh, it's, uh, I'm hoping I can get something on this thing sooner or later. I mean, we try hard. Um, I use all the resources I have. Um, now we're going to start checking out caves to see if we can find a lair of some sorts. Uh, you know, uh, does it even have to sleep? We've not come across uh, any uh, carcasses that it, it took apart, but we have three reports where it was chewing on a roadkill. But until we got the report, until we got there, the roadkill was long gone. And that's another way you could prove it. If you got a roadkill and you could, you know, the bite marks or, or claw marks left on the carcass. I mean, this thing's head is much larger than a normal wolf, and a wolf head is very big. So if you got a bite mark of a regular wolf, and I do have a, a skull here of a real wolf, a timber wolf, a uh, gray, I'm sorry, gray, um, so I know what the bite imprint is. So now if I get another bite mark on, say, a bone or, or in a hide that's wider and longer, well, that's another indication that there's something else out there that shouldn't be there. Butch, we have about 30 seconds left with you tonight. Let everybody know, my friend, that they can reach you where? They can reach me at ufocop.com, U-F-O-R. COP.com, Facebook under Euphorcop or UFO Research Center of Pennsylvania or JAR Magazine, J-A-R Magazine, or uh, just under Butch Wachowski. Uh, if somebody needs something, they can go to the website at Euphorcop.com, uh, go to the terrestrial contact page, uh, just fill out what you want me to do or what you need or if you need a phone call or if you want to find something or if you need help, I'll be there. Thank you, Butch. We will talk to you on February 25th. Coming all right, up next, next. Coming up next, Olda Phillips with the SOR Newswire. We'll be back. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio Live with Dave Scott on the Deep Talk Radio Network. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. 
Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hi there, this is Geraldine Orozco from San Francisco's Bay Area Meditation. I invite you to join me the first Tuesday of every month with Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's The Spiritual You. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's time for you to take some time for you. We'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality. So come join us for The Spiritual You. We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there, this is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me, Chris Zuger, and Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything has an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. Are you tired of being blocked, shadow banned, or placed in jail for simply posting your thoughts on social media? Social Media Freedom can take care of that for you. Social Media Freedom is the newest and one of the best free new apps that allows you the freedom to post what you want, when you want. It takes seconds to download from your app store. Come join the tribe at Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream. Play. Unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Hello, this is Yoga Tall Man Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best $5 a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. 
Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? You know, it's hard being the bad man of ufology, but that's just the way that I like it. This is Chris George Zuger, and I'll be hanging out with Dave Scott and SOR scientist Chris Cogswell for Reality Paranormal, the second Wednesday of every month. And our job is to break it down and come to conclusions as to what is really going on in the supernatural world. I'd love for you to join us right here on Spaced Out Radio. Welcome back to Spaced Out Radio as we've rounded third and we're heading for home tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, broadcasting to you from the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. And now we get to the news of the night with the SOR Newswire provided by Paranoia Magazine. And we bring in the man, the myth, the paranoia legend, Mr. Olaf Phillips. The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show. to talk about the weird, the wacky, the WTF of the news of the night. And with that, from Paranoia Magazine, Olaf Phillips comes on in. Olaf, how you doing, buddy? Greetings and salutations. Hope you had a great weekend, my friend, coming off another couple I of did. days in California where, you know, it was a... Uh, mild 50s 60s i'm going to assume yep it was it was must nice. be tough it was actually must very be nice tough must very be tough, tough. Very tough. Very yeah exactly so tough so tough yeah well <laughs> you know we had a good weekend around here had some friends come on over for the weekend and and um you know as much as i dig mrs sor she's not a good cook and my buddy Corey came over, and his wife is just a phenomenal cook. So when she comes over, it's like gourmet. And she's always like, no, oh, no, I'll make dinner. I'll make dinner. Don't you worry. You guys just sit down and relax. I'll make dinner. My God, I have had leftovers two days in a row, man. I am so, so thankful that, you know. Good stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, God bless Mrs. S.O.R. and everything, but gee whiz, man. If I could keep her out of the kitchen, I would. You know, maybe I need some yellow tape. <laughs> You're going to get in trouble, man. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. She's very open about it. She's very open. But you know what? I have to admit she has improved over the years because... When we fir- when we first got together, it was a one course meal of frozen chicken that was thawed. 
She didn't even know how to put spices on it. Season it up a Pretty little. Pretty nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty nasty. Yeah. Anyways. Doesn't take much. Salt. We'll just, just a little salt and pepper, man. I know, but we'll just shh on that. We'll shh on that. Anyhow, let's get to the news, man. Let's get to the news. What do you got for us to kick off the week? Man clings to hood of SUV in high-speed road rage incident. Oh, I saw that. A 65-year-old man clung to the hood of an SUV as it traveled at speeds up to 70 miles an hour following a road rage incident on the Massachusetts Turnpike. The man, Richard Kamrowski, and the driver of the SUV, 37-year-old Mark Fitzgerald, were involved in a minor sideswipe on Saturday and had pulled over to exchange information, Fox News reported. When the men got into an argument, Fitzgerald began to drive away. That's when Kamowski jumped on the hood of Fitzgerald's SUV. I thought he was going to run me over, and I didn't know. I and I didn't know. Or I didn't think he stopped. He just kept going uh, fast and slow, fast and slow, trying to get me to slide off the hood. And I wasn't getting off the car. Ultimately, other drivers, including one with a gun, <laughs> persuaded Fitzgerald to stop his vehicle. That's bad. <laughs> uh, Massachusetts State Police arrested both Fitzgerald and Kamowski. WFXT reported Fitzgerald faces charges of assault with a dangerous weapon, negligent driving, and leaving the scene of an accident involving property damage. Kamowski was charged with disorderly conduct. The man with the gun was not charged. <laughs> Obviously Where not. Where to begin? Obviously no, not. Obviously, I mean, don't charge the guy with the gun. Who does that? I mean, if you have a person lying on the hood of your car, unless they're trying to carjack down the freeway. you. I saw the video to that. That is scary, man. I mean, is, is. jail worth road rage? Is jail worth a murder charge or a manslaughter charge or road rage? Is it worth it? I mean, it's amazing how these people snap and they don't even think of the consequences. I mean, that dude falls off. He's dead. He's, yeah, he's dead. Die. Exactly. <coughs> yeah, he's Just die. doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. No. All right, let, let's get to the next one, my friend. Couch atop Manhattan tree perplexes neighbors. Baffled residents of a New York neighborhood said that a couch had been suspended 20 to 25 feet up in a tree without explanation for days. The couch was photographed atop a tree in a residential part of West 95th Street in Manhattan near Amsterdam Avenue on the Upper West Side. Neighbors said the couch has been stuck in the tree for several days without explanation. It is unclear whether the city had plans to remove the couch. Just a couch sitting in a, in a tree. tree. I love things tree. like that. The, I love things in like the middle that. of New York. Because you know, some engineering student did that. You know for a fact. Because that's Probably. the type of pranks up here in Vancouver at the University of British Columbia. The engineering graduates play a prank on the city every year. And they will s- somehow, without anybody seeing, suspend a VW bug at the bottom of a bridge or on top of a bridge or hanging from a a crane in the middle of the city. And nobody knows how they are doing this. But it's like this. You know, and this has been going on for decades. The funniest, The funniest thing I ever saw with my own eyes is when I was in high school, I think I was a freshman or a, junior, a freshman or a sophomore in high school, that they, they did the yearly senior prank. And this, this one particular year, the seniors uh, went extra far. And what they did is they dug a hole in the middle of the quad, right? And then they, they laid concrete, and then they encased a keg, a beer keg, in the concrete in the middle of the quad. That's awesome. And it was just sitting there. And they had a hell of a time getting it out because they really dug a deep hole and filled it with a lot of concrete. 
<laughs> I mean, I know right. how they did it, but yeah. it's, it's just funny. Let's move on Are to the next ready? one, brother. I'm ready. A, for- a Florida man has found a grenade while fishing and then took the explosive to Taco Bell. A Florida well, man course. made an explosive <laughs> made an explosive discovery Saturday while magnet fishing. Uh, while using a magnet to search the water for salvage items, this fisherman pulled up a World War II hand grenade, according to police in Oca- Ocala, Florida, about 80 miles northwest of Orlando. The fisherman threw the grenade in his truck and drove to Taco Bell, where he called police. The Taco Bell was evacuated, police said, but was reopened later that day. Thank God. Ocala police okay. later verified their Facebook page the device was a World War II hand grenade, and a bomb squad had removed the device without incident. Only in Florida does somebody find a hand grenade, take it to the Taco Bell, and then call the cops. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. That totally doesn't make sense. You might want to reverse that so that way you don't have the, the ability to either A, blow yourself up, or B, blow others up. I mean, that's just a, a, a little bit of a thought. You know what I'm saying? Like newsflash, find a, find a hand grenade. Don't throw it in the back of your truck and don't drive to Taco Bell. Put it on the ground and call the cops. Just saying. Just saying. Just put it on the ground, walk away from it, and call the police. Just saying. Don't involve Taco Bell. You don't need to involve Taco Bell. No, there, there's never a need no. to threaten a Taco Bell like that, it, and you and I will agree on that. You and I will totally yeah. agree on that. I think so. All right, let's move so, on. This last one comes under the heading, from the news station, comes under the heading, Florida. Florida man learns hard way. He stole lax- laxatives, not opioids. A Florida man thought he was being smart when he stole opioids from medicine cabinet of a home where he was staying. However, Peter Hans Emery, 56, quickly learned he didn't steal opioids at all. Instead, the laxatives he took probably sent him running to the bathroom. The smoking gun reports Emery was caught on video Thursday morning entering the victim's lockbox at a Pinellas home and pouring the pills into his hand. The pills were labeled hydrocodone acetaminophen, which is a pain medication that can be highly addictive. However, the pills themselves were actually equitate gentle laxatives. After a long, or sorry, with a long rap sheet, Emery was arrested and booked on on a felony charge and probation violation charges. So yes, he, he thought he was stealing drugs. No, he stole laxatives. That could be a dirty situation right there, my friend. Dirty that, that could situation. Be a one. That that, that could sucker be a for one. that dude for a while should probably have a trailer with a porta potty on the back of it. Honestly, yeah, that's just dangerous. I know, I know, but I think they got him wrong. I think that's Vicodin. What he thought he was stealing is Vicodin. I have no idea. Not like, yeah. I have no idea. The only thing that I know is, you know, you just, you don't do that. You know? You just yeah, don't do that. Hydrocodone with acetaminophens like, you know. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I was a pharmacy technician when I was young. Well, I don't blame you. <coughs> I don't blame you. All right. You, you, you ready? Yeah. You dispense a lot of Vicodin. Trust me. When you're in a, a pharmacy, you dispense a lot of Vicodin, man. I mean, it's like M&M's. Like, people... There's a lot of Vicodin. Weird. They give you Vicodin for anything. Yeah. Well, let's get to the thought of the day, shall we? Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. 
Thought of the Dave happens every night at this time where we ask a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages, then read your responses on the air. Why? Well, that's because we love the audience participation around here. So today's Thought of the Dave is as follows. Tell me your dog, man, or Bigfoot encounter. Nice and simple, right? Let's get to some of these really cool responses tonight, Olaf. We got some good ones. We really do. No fun. Renee, the one and only one I had was going over the Cascade Mountains heading to Seattle. Standing by the side of the road as we passed, there he was, bigger than life. Told my ex, okay, just keep driving, just keep driving. By the way, it was a Bigfoot. She said the windows were up. They didn't smell anything. I know it smell. She says she knows what sulfur smells that like, though. And, yeah, interesting stuff wow. indeed. Gail jumps in. And for once, she's not talking about Rob Zombie or her lusting after him. <laughs> she goes... I don't have a story for either. As close as I could get would be a buffalo in Boise, Idaho, who had an extreme dislike for only me. No one could figure it out, but when I came near his pen at the zoo, he would stop everything and ram the fence with his head. That's all I've got. That's scary. Wow. That is scary. I wouldn't do it. That, well, you know, I was in Yellowstone. And we took the the little paranoias, and we're driving through Yellowstone. Yeah. And all the all the cars stop, right? And we're like, "What? What's going on? What's going on?" And these three buffalo are like walking down the middle of the street, the road, and everybody just yeah. stopped, and they walked right up next to the car. They were like as big as the car, and it's just like, and the one turned and looked at my oldest son through the window. And I mean, they were like six inches apart and he was like breathing and blowing snot all over the wind, the window. And my yeah. son is just like fortified. He's like petrified that this thing is like staring at him. And then they just walked away. That's, that's my Buffalo story. Weird. I've never been that close to a Buffalo. It's frightening. Although, They're huge. Although I did get, a, get out last year of my buddy's truck when we were right beside a bunch of wild horses, I did get out. Yeah, but they they backed off. They're pretty skittish. Either not way. a buffalo. No, they don't not care. a buffalo. Anyway, no, they'll hurt you. No. No. All right, let's move on. I'll hurt your car. <laughs> yeah. Joe says, "Bigfoot are like ninjas. You know they're there, but you just can't see them." Robin, I was hiking with a friend and got lost. I stopped to eat a power bar, and I looked up 15 to 20 feet away from me. I saw something much taller than a human being moving through the forest. That's eerie. That is. Tina, this is an interesting one. Tina says, the Bigfoot like to come and eat my apples in the fall. They avoid the trail cameras I have all around. Last year, I was late getting the apples. They took all the apples six feet and higher, left me the ones down low. We've had three knocks done to get our attention. I've heard them whistle. We've had them grunt at us. I haven't seen them, only heard and smelled them. I leave pretty rocks on the fence posts. Some have been taken. That's actually kind of cool. That is cool. That is very, very cool. All right. Scrolling down here. <laughs> Chris, I once saw a Dogman video and wondered, how stupid do people have to believe in this creature? Could be a fox or a cat in the woods. Nope, it's a werewolf. Son of a gun. Michael, I have not encountered a Dogman, but my three Sasquatch encounters would be Way too long for this forum. Let's get to Edie. 
You've already heard my best stories on the air when I was a guest, Dave. Except we saw the big guy last spring standing on a corner, watching us drive by. Then there was another sighting of the White Elder. At E. Seti Ranch, Carl said he saw one about 40 yards from his tent. He says, I wear a size 13 shoe, and I estimate that this size was 16 to 17 inches. It was about 6 inches across at the toe area. Didn't hear a thing. I decided to stay an extra night after most of the people left. My tent was about 10 yards from the trash cans, which had all the lids secured with bungee cords, but one could lift them slightly. Around 3 a.m., I was awoken by noise coming from the trash can area. Got up and shined my flashlight through the screen window, but saw nothing. The lids were all secured in the morning. And he's submitted a photo of the footprint. That's actually kind of cool. Olaf, where can everybody find Paranoia Magazine? Paranoiamagazine.com. A uh, new podcast up. It's super, ra- super, super rad. Super you are rad. rad. Don't forget ParanoiaMagazine.com. You can find all of your news provided by Captain Shirk, our beautiful newsie, at SpacedOutRadio.com. Click on the news banner. We also want to say tonight a big thank you to Butch Witkowski for coming on for Strange Days. Butch's website is UFORCOP.com. So if you have a sighting or an experience you'd like to share or investigate, just head over to his website and put it on down get your fingers going type out your story of what happened also butch will be back on february 25th as he comes in the final monday of every month to share the latest in creepy cryptid and alien tales gotta love him for that tomorrow night on the show we're gonna get a little zen and spiritual guiding kathy our guest will be kathy Werstein tomorrow night And we're going to talk about this real supernatural experience that she had that's really paved the way for how she's changed her life. It's going to be interesting. We get going at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern at spacedoutradio.com. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thal rocking in the background with Little Brother is Watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. A big thank you to all of you listening in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be. And of course, all of you in the chat rooms on Spreaker, Facebook, Rev Radio, on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. Thanks for playing along. Thanks for doing your part to make us bigger and better every single night. Because together, my friends, we own the night. I will talk to you in 21 hours from now. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Good night.